For this example, we will be using implicit differentiation to find the derivative dy dx of this implicit equation. We do not solve for y first, we just take d dx of both sides to, as our first step of implicit differentiation. So here we do have the uh, square root, which perhaps algebraically we first need to see as the one-half power. And then we need to stop and think uh, before we actually take the derivative. So on the left-hand side, we see that this is a chain rule because we have something ugly raised to a power. Of course, that something ugly actually involves y, which is our special variable, and so it's actually going to be a nested chain rule. On the um, right-hand side, though, we have uh, 5 times x times y. So we actually see a product there. We have um, two two things multiplied together, and I'm going to group them this way. We've got a 5x times a y, and so we've got two things that are multiplied together. Remember the y implicitly is uh, in terms of x, and so we really do have to use a product rule there. Uh, they both involve um, x. And so we're ready now to take the derivative uh, with respect to x of both sides. So I'm going to do that, d dx of, we've got the 3y minus 1 to the 1 half, is equal to the ddx of the product of 5x times y. And again, I'm going to kind of indicate that product rule right there. Okay. So when we take the derivative with respect to x here on the left-hand side, we're going to be using the chain rule. We bring down the power 1 half, and we take exactly what's in the parentheses, 3y minus 1, and we drop the power by 1. So we have the power 1 half minus 1, which will give us negative 1 half. And then we take the derivative of the inside function. So the derivative of 3y minus 1, we have a, a difference, so we can just take the derivative term by term. So we first take the derivative of 3y. Uh, with respect to x. So the derivative of 3y with respect to x would be uh, 3 times the derivative of y with respect to x using constant multiple rule. So we'd have 3 dy dx. Then we take the derivative of 1. Um, we have the derivative of the constant 1 would just be 0. So we would have minus 0 and we can just write, uh, we can just close off our parentheses. So we've worked pretty hard, but we only have the derivative with respect to x of the left-hand side. So now we've got to do the same for the right-hand side. So that derivative there on the right-hand side is going to be a product rule. And so we have the derivative of the first term, d dx of 5x, times the second term there in the product, which would be y, plus we have the first term, which is 5x, times the derivative of the second term in the product, which is the derivative of y. Yeah. So we have a, a little bit more to go to get um, to finish off doing derivatives. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean up in our next step uh, the left-hand side here. So we have uh, the number 1 half times this uh, factor that's raised to the negative a half and then times a, a number times dy. So I'm going to combine these two uh, fairly simple terms by going ahead and doing the multiplication, giving me 3 halves dy dx. Actually, let me write the dy dx last. So I have the 3 halves, and I'm going, because it's all multiplication, it doesn't really matter the order that we write these things in. So we have 3 halves times the 3y minus 1 to the negative half, and I'm going to tack that dy dx on to the end for our multiplication. So that cleans up my left-hand side. Um, so we've got to go ahead and do a little bit of work here for the derivative of the right-hand side. So the derivative with respect to x of 5x, x wasn't special, so that derivative is simply 5, and then times the y that's sitting right next to it. For the next one, in the sum, we have uh, 5x times the derivative with respect to x of y, and y was special, so that would be the dy dx factor that we have. So at this point, we've done all of the calculus to complete all of the derivatives, but we still don't have dy dx equals. That's where the algebra is going to come into play. So this is just a copy of our last step there, and now we need to work to solve for dy dx. So if you notice, uh, what we have here is um, things multiplied by dy dx 
or terms that are multiplied by dy dx and terms that are not multiplied by dy dx. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to gather all of the dy dx terms, so all dy dx terms on one side with all others on the other side. So what I'm looking at here is this is a dy dx term, this is a dy dx term, and this is a non dy dx term. So I'm going to gather all my dy dx terms on the left hand side here and just leave my single non dy dx term on the right hand side. So when I do that I'll have uh, this first term just copied as is. So 3 halves times the uh, 3 minus 3y minus 1 raised to the negative 1 half times the dy dx because that's the dy dx term and this other uh, term that's on the other side 5x dy dx we need to subtract it from both sides to get it over to the other side and then we're leaving the 5y on the right hand side so the whole purpose of gathering all the dy dx terms on one side with all others on the other side would be so that now we can factor out the common factor of dy dx. So when we factor out the common dy dx here, we have that multiplied by everything left over. So the 3 halves and then that factor to the negative a half and we have the minus 5x left over also. Um, that's of course equal to the 5y. And the very last step that we do now that we have dy dx uh, factored out, basically we have dy dx times stuff. And so if we can divide over that stuff, we've got dy dx by itself. So our last step of algebra is divide. And when we do that, here's what we get, dy dx equals, well we've got um, 5y that's on the top because that's from the uh, right hand side there, and then we have the rest of this, the 3 halves and then the factor 3y minus 1 raised to the negative a half uh, minus 5x. And that would be our derivative um, of y with respect to x for that implicit equation that we began with.